Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the team at Sundog. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams and in particular we're going to talk about the chat and video chat function. Now Teams is a really robust platform within the Microsoft 365 product stack but we're just going to focus on those two items today uh, in order to give you as much value as possible in a brief period as possible. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and click on Microsoft Teams and that's going to open us up and as you can see I'm in the chat session in the upper left hand corner. I've selected chat and you can see a whole slew of different chats that I've already been a part of. So the question is, how do you, how do you, how do you get started? How do you get started talking to people, if you, especially if you're just getting into Teams? So at the very top, you have search or type of command. We're just going to go ahead and put in search. And I'll cover if you by chance know someone running Microsoft Teams outside your organization, it's really easy to search for them. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'll reach out to my friend Jennifer and if you see I have the option to search for her email address externally so that's all I did was put in her email address and now I have the ability to search if I click on that and it finds her it'll go ahead and establish the chat session and if it can't find her it'll let you know that as well but we'll go ahead and start right now I'm gonna start talking with someone internally so here's Josh Plaza good old Josh as you can see, you, it leaves up the history of previous chat sessions, which is really helpful because it's nice to be able to go back in time and see other things that we might have chatted about in the past, um, which is really cool. But for our purposes, we'll just do right now. So we have our chat window at the bottom, and I can do something as simple as, hello, Josh. What's incredibly popular and what people usually do is there, question mark. So rather than call them, get up, walk, see if he's in his office or not, he's not, you come back to your desk, you can just go ahead and type there. And now on his side, the Teams icon has turned red and there's a little number one next to it saying, hey, you got a chat, someone's reaching out to you. So when he returns to his office, he can go ahead and uh, respond to that. And as you can see, he's responding right now, it looks like. So there's some additional features that you can do within chat, which is kind of cool. So formatting. So let's say I wanted to do, hello Josh, um, but let's say it was really important what I wanted to uh, <laughs> be able to highlight. So I can make things bold and go ahead and I am just testing video right now. No need to respond. Oops, if I could type, no need to respond. And I click send. And as you can see, it'll put in bold. But we have a slew of options here from font size to font color, italicized, underlined. A lot of the major functionality that you have within any word processor will be available to you within that chat session too. And if we keep going down the line, I can also set this to be a priority message where I want it to be marked urgent or I want it to be marked important. So urgent, he's just going to keep getting reminded, hey, don't forget, don't forget. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it as a standard message uh, as I'm typing to Josh. We have the ability to do attachments. So attachments are, let's say you're working on a particular file uh, and you wanted to be able to attach it to the chat, se chat session. Could be a logo you're working on, could be a spreadsheet that you're collaborating on. So I can go ahead and click on the paperclip, which is attachment, and I've got the ability to select OneDrive, which what's really cool about that is, if you're saving all your documents within Microsoft OneDrive, right in the cloud, here is a copy of my entire OneDrive folder that I've got, and I could browse that particular document and go ahead and attach it directly in the chat session. But sometimes you have items that aren't stored in the cloud. They might be on your computer directly for whatever reason. When you click on the paperclip, you can actually click on Upload from My Computer. And when I do that, obviously, I've got the ability to be able to browse my file and folder structure on my computer and be able to select a particular document. We can also move down to emojis. Of course, there's a wide variety of emojis. I mean, this is the 21st century, and that's a wonderful way to add a little emotion to what is otherwise pretty dry content. It's hard for people to know, were you kidding in that last statement or not? If you attach the right emoji, uh, people understand what your sense of humor is or what your emotion is as you type that, which is great. But most popular right now, obviously, is memes. And you have that same ability uh, right now. So I could go ahead and click on the GIF icon at the bottom and I could type in fantastic and there's a whole slew of memes that I'd be able to pick uh, and attach to it. And also what I would do is hit send and Josh would go ahead and receive that particular meme. 
but you can keep going down. There's stickers available if you wanted to attach them, which can be funny. And you can also schedule a meeting. So let's say Josh and I were talking on something right now, and I'm like, you know what? We're going back and forth in chat. This is something important. We actually need to do a discussion. I can write from this chat session, click on the calendar icon. Josh is automatically added as a required attendee to this meeting. I can put in what this is, test meeting. I can select the, the day, the time, the duration. Is it a recurring meeting or not? Or is it just once? I'm going to put does not repeat. I can add it to a channel, more advanced teams uh, discussion there, but ultimately, if it was part of my leadership team, I could add it to the leadership team channel, which would be great. I can put the location, uh, his desk, my desk, or right here in, in cyberspace, let's say. And I can type in any notes that I want to have for that particular meeting. When I hit send, it automatically adds to Josh's Outlook calendar, as well as sends them a meeting email just to notify them that, hey, a meeting has been requested that you join. So a great way of being able to schedule a meeting instantly within chat and all the communication associated with it, which is fantastic. And then there's other, depending on the applications you have installed in Microsoft Teams, a lot of those will show up at the bottom like Forms and Zoom and Stream. Um, so there's other things that will appear here as well, but that kind of covers the, the major basics within a chat session um, on how you communicate. Now, one additional, maybe a few additional, but one additional cool feature is if I was talking to Josh and all of a sudden we started realizing, you know what, Rich would really benefit from this conversation, all that I have to do is I can, in the upper right hand corner here, click on add people and I'm going to type in Rich and now I'm adding Rich Cackery to this particular chat session. So I'll go ahead and hit add. I have not yet had Josh and Rich in the chat, so it shows you it's starting a brand new conversation. If the two of us had chatted previously, it remembers that, and it would have left the prior uh, chat history between the three of us, uh, uh, and it would be displayed here in this session. So I can go ahead and type in hello all, and now that went to Rich, and that also went to Josh. And you can continue to add more people to the chat session. Uh, I have yet to hit the limit. I'm sure there's a limit at some point. But it's a really neat way to pull others into a conversation as it goes ahead and evolves. All right, so that's chat. What I also want to do is cover audio and video. So imagine I'm going to go ahead and just reach out to Rich directly. Did you notice at the top I just typed in Rich? Here he is. Awesome. And in the upper right hand corner again, I've got, besides the add uh, people to this particular chat, I've got some other icons. First is an audio call. So let's say you're chatting back and forth and you realize, look, I, I just need to explain this and it's taking way too long to type. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on an audio call. And as you can see right now, it's gonna call Rich. So on his desk, as he's sitting there, it's going ahead and ringing. And now you can see Rich has picked up. Hello, Rich. Oh. Hello, Colin. How are you? Ah, he went video right out of the gate. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hang up, and I will show you how the video part works. So that's a really neat way to, you can just do audio without video. He answered with video, which is awesome. So in this case, let's say I wanted to have a video call with Rich. Now, within our organization, I'm on multiple video chats daily with my own team members and with people in the community, clients, and other associations I'm a part of video chat these days is becoming more and more of a primary form of communication because with video you not only get to see them obviously and hear them but you get the facial expressions you get the tone of voice you get all those things that in a straight chat session or an email just aren't possible and we, we as humans love relationships and we love that face to face so rather than getting in a car and driving 45 minutes maybe to have a meeting with someone or a group of people this is a wonderful way that we can collaborate online, see each other, hear each other, and feel like we're almost sitting in the same room with each other. So to show you how that works, I'm gonna go ahead and initiate a video call with Rich again. And it's calling. Hey Rich. Hey Colin, how are you? Good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, we got Rich on the line, and the question is, how do you add someone else to uh, a video call? So let's say Rich and I were talking, and we realized, you know what, Dale would be great to have as part of this conversation, so let's go ahead and rope Dale into this thing as well. 
So all what I have to do is down here on the bar, and this bar will appear when you move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen. I can click on Show Participants, and you'll see here's Cohen, here's Rich. So I can also invite someone. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Dale, and we're going to see if Dale's available to join us on this particular call. So you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, it's bleeping on Dale, and uh, hopefully he's at his desk and ready to respond. Perfect. Hello, Dale. Hey, Dale, how you doing? Good, how are you? Wonderful. All right, as you can see, uh, it's great. We got a split screen, so I've got Dale on the call, I've got Rich on the call, um, and this is a great way for us to be able to collaborate. Some cool things while you're actually on the call with each other is if we go down to the bottom right hand corner here, you can see I can turn my camera off by just clicking this button. I can go mute. Sometimes that's nice if you have a lot of background noise. You can go ahead and mute yourself and then unmute yourself when it's time to talk. But I'll go ahead and just hit mute and you can see a line goes through it and that tells me that I've been muted at this point. But a really powerful feature here is the ability to be able to share your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on share. And as you can see, I have the ability to share an individual application. So in a lot of cases, people want to share just PowerPoint. And the reason you do that is because other pop-ups happen on your computer from Outlook or from Microsoft Teams. That can be a distraction. So sometimes it's nice just to share that particular application. But you can also just share the entire screen. So if I hit share screen, now Rich and Dale get to see my desktop background here. So if I wanted to, I could bring up Microsoft Excel and I could show them uh, a particular spreadsheet that I'm working on, which is uh, a really neat way of doing it. To stop sharing, I just click on the share button again. You see it has an X and I'll hit stop sharing. And there's a few more really cool features as well. Uh, you'll notice Dale did it, but I can blur my background. So sometimes, especially if you're working from home and you got a bunch of stuff behind you and you really don't want someone to see uh, how messy your house is, uh, you could actually blur your background and that goes ahead and hides it. Other people do it because you might have a lot of distractions in the background. People walking back and forth, or maybe you have a view of the outside and there's cars driving, driving by. This is a really nice way just to remove all that noise um, so people can just focus on you. If you notice, I also have the ability to start recording. So I can record this session if I wanted to. Recording is always available when you have multiple people on a particular call, uh, which is neat. And I have the ability to just turn off all incoming video uh, if I want because I initiated this session. So that's really cool. And the last thing I wanted to show you all is if I click on show conversation, this is a chat session. So a lot of times when, especially when you have a video call with multiple people and there's a lot happening, rather than trying to interrupt someone with a quick question, we'll put in the chat, uh, there's Dale saying, yes, it is. So we'll put in a chat asking each other questions. So other offline conversations can still continue while the primary conversation is happening. This happens all the time on large group meetings. Like within our organization, we have a daily huddle. There'll be over 15 people on that. So there's always conversations happening in the chat as we're going around the room and everyone is describing what's going on throughout their day. But ultimately, that's video chat within Microsoft Teams. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for uh, being part of this call. Have a good one. So I hit end call by just clicking on the red button with the phone at the bottom again. And that ended the conversation uh, with the three of us, and I'm back within Microsoft Teams. So I know I threw a lot at you. Uh, I hope it was informative for you. And the coolest thing, too, is yes, there is an app for that. So whether it's Android or whether it's your iPhone, Microsoft Teams app is an incredibly robust application that you can use. You can do full video chats, calls, uh, instant messaging, everything you want within the Microsoft Teams app while you're out and about mobile which is a really cool way to stay engaged when you're out and about outside the office, but you still need to maintain that connectivity with your staff. So in a nutshell, that was some basic Teams uh, functionality for you. Please stay tuned to our YouTube channel, to our website, for tons of instructional videos across a wide variety of applications. And as always, if you have any questions or if you ever need us, you can reach out to the Sundog team at sundogit.com or you can call us at 815 991-2400. Take care, everyone.